Okay, last one on the list. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, is that Mr. Caddy? Oh, yes, yeah, speaking. Hello there is Dr. Charles from Tobor Medical Centre here. Oh, hello Doctor. How can I help you? Well, I'm afraid it's bad news. Uh, due to the coronavirus outbreak, I'm going to have to ask you not to go to work. What? Uh, don't, no, don't, don't worry. It's only for a short time. Well, how long is it going to be for? Well, for your own safety, we've put you on the vulnerable list, so it could be anything up to around 12 weeks. 12 weeks?! So, no, no, you really must not panic, Mr. Mr. Caddy, because the <coughs> government will support you during this time. And, uh, hello? M Mr. Caddy? Mr. Caddy? <laughs> Mr. Oh. I guess the poor chap just couldn't take it. Well, he, he learned to adapt. He, he must learn to adapt. What up YouTube? Welcome back to another build video. Today we're actually going to be doing what I've been meaning to do since the start of this project and that's build the sodding axe mechanism. So let's get into it. So first off I'm just using a paper template which I showed you how to make in a previous video so I'll, I'll put the link in the card somewhere. This is just so I can then cut out of plywood just a basic prototype so I can sort of work out where everything needs to be, work out where the holes need to be, mountains and that kind of thing. Next I cut everything out on the bandsaw. You don't need to use a bandsaw for this but it's a new toy and I wanted to use it so why not. Anything I couldn't get with a bandsaw I just used a jigsaw to finish it off with. Uh, this was just due to the size of the actual basin I couldn't fit it in the bandsaw. I cut everything else out using the same method and as you can see it's going to be flamboyant but you'll see more about the actual design and everything in the build video when I ever get round to doing it. You know, it's times like these I really wish I had a CNC. Perhaps that should be on the cards for the future. One tip here, print yourself two templates rather than try and copy one onto the other. It'll get a much better result. Now this is something I would definitely recommend doing, screwing two, the two pieces together and then drilling them both at exactly the same time means the hole will be exactly in the same space for both of them and you won't have any wonkiness when you come to put the bar in. Don't worry the bar's not staying that long. Uh, we'll cut it down later, but this is just so I can test things. So here I'm just double checking that the motor still works, and as you can see it definitely still does. It was jumping and it was only on 12 volts, so that's good. So to get the old gear off for the belt that was originally on it, there's a little sort of circlip that you take off with a pair of circlip pliers, or just regular pliers you could probably get it off. But as you can see here, I'm having quite a bit of trouble to getting it off, so I found a little tip online, is to just heat it up with sort of a, a fairly beefy lighter or I'm using a, an actual chef's torch here to uh, heat it up then get two screwdrivers one either side and push exactly the same time and it just pops off lovely and as you can probably tell from my reaction here I wasn't expecting that to be so easy that went really well <laughs> I didn't expect that to work thank you my friend 
didn't actually kick that would be stupid just just FYI now on to one of the things I've been dreading the most drilling the hole for the axe bar it's gonna be feckin' hot and that is a DeWalt proper nasty metal cutting drill bit 12 millimeters And it's got some nice flat edges so it won't slip in the chuck hopefully. There's nothing folks. <laughs> it was going quite well. This bit is bang on. But uh Oh, we nearly got there. I'm gonna clean some of these off. Don't touch these, these are going to be hot and freaking sharp. Really sharp. I need some gloves. <laughs> Found a glove. Yeah, this is, these are swells of death. This is not as painful to drill as I thought it was going to be. I've got to be honest, I thought this was going to be absolutely awful. Last tiny little section. There we are. That's our 12 mil bore. Gets quite boring. Do you get it? Because it's a drill and it's boring. Yeah, I'll move on. That's beautiful. And I deburred it by accident. If you're interested by it. There you are. Uh, I deburred it by accident because I actually had the step bit and then you start the next step bit put a nice chamfer on the edge of there so I might do the same on the back of there you know just to make it easy to slide on and off but so far that's looking all right let's just hope I shouldn't have ordered the 12 and a half mil bit in this one actually fit I can just file it it's no biggie but it's just so yes we need a little bit of persuasion I don't know, we'll, we'll have at it with a file and see what happens. <laughs> Look at that! It's through! It's through! <laughs> so, that's the, like, the ultimate guy for when you're playing snooker, that is. Perfect! Well, as it turns out, not so perfect. Can you see that wobble? That's awful. This is what happens when you don't level the bed on your drill press. So this next section is just a little tangent on a good way of leveling your drill press bed, especially if you've got one like mine, which doesn't adjust front to back and only left to right. So what you want to do is get yourself some like a, an old stiff coat hanger. I'm just using some old galvanized wire that my dad had lying about. And then you want to like lock it in your actual chuck of the drill press and then bring your bed up to meet it so it's just touching and then you want to spin the chuck of the drill and you want to look to see where the low and the high spot is underneath the tip of the wire this will tell you where you need to adjust your bed left to right or front to back now i actually tore a leaf out of my 3d printing book here i actually used a bit of paper underneath the wire just to feel where the low and the high spots were because I found that a little bit easier than actually looking for it. If you need to level it left and right then there's a big bolt that's underneath the bed itself that attaches it to the bar at the back and you just loosen that and then that'll allow you to tilt the bed. But unfortunately I actually had the problem that it was front to back that it was out and there's no adjustment for that unfortunately there's no screw or anything like that. There is a mod that you can do that adds basic adjustment to front and back but I didn't really want to get into this right now so I found a tip online that's similar to the way we fix the bed on the 3D printer and that's just to lay a tape on the low spots and then build it up until then it becomes the same level all the way front to back this actually worked surprisingly well I wasn't expecting it to be as accurate as it was but it it really did the job and because I'm using an actual little voice that I bought off Amazon to sit on top of it that will then also further smooth out any sort of discrepancies so I think this will be a good solution 
If you're interested, I might have a go at doing that little bit of a mod to see if I can add the adjustment in, and then that'll alleviate the need to have this sort of tape monstrosity on it. But um, you just want to rinse and repeat until you get it as even as you can all the way along. That's why I'm using sort of a strip over the edge there, and then I, I cut a strip in half to go in the middle. And um, because I didn't really want to cover that hole up in the middle, not that it would have mattered because I would have drilled straight through it anyway. But I wanted it to be as accurate as possible because I wanted that gear to be as accurate as possible. So we'll see how we do in a minute. I actually made a mini version of this as well just so I could check the voice was level. And uh, it turns out that it was actually pretty smack on. There was a ever so slight discrepancy, but not enough to make a difference. And as you can see, that's had a massive difference on the actual gear there. It's pretty much perfect now. There's barely any sort of wobble front to back. So with my newfound confidence, I then went on to drilling the hole for the little gear that fits on the end of the motor. Also, quick tip, make sure it's clamped properly. In case you were wondering why I started with the step bit, that's just so I can get the hole perfectly centre because the actual step before is the same size as the hole that's actually already in there and then I then just finish it off with the right size drill bit all the way through. Let's hope we've done this one a bit over the plant. Sorry plant. I've really done this one a little better. I'm going to give a moment I have a display on my camera and it's awful. There we are. I think the ends need a bit deburring. So what's that one does anyway? Because that goes almost on the perfect look at that. That is looking pretty damn good. That looks pretty straight to me. So moral is story folks. Level your bloody drill press first and don't do what I did. So my plan to lock it in place is just to put a little grub screw in the side of the cog and then that will sit against the flat that's on the motor shaft. And I'm just using a 3.3mm drill bit here so then when I actually tap it that's the right size for the tap that I'm going to use. This isn't strictly necessary but I just wanted to make sure that I got the right thread before I then tap the hole. And then I'm just using a tap and die set that I got off Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. But this is quite important. Make sure you use some cutting oil. And I just so happen to manage to get some WD-40 cutting oil. And you want to spray it on your um, tap and spray it in the hole. And then start your tap and do one full turn and then go back half a turn. And then do one full turn, go back half a turn. And then keep doing this until you get all the way through. You want to be very gentle because you really don't want to snap that tap off because it'll be an absolute nightmare to get back out of there because they're made of like a really hardened steel so they're ultra brittle so just take your time. Incidentally I'm using an M4 tap for this. If I can find a decent one I'll stick a link in the description to a size chart to tell you which drill bit you need for which tap. So here I'm just putting the circlip back on and then screwing the grub screw in onto the flat part of the motor shaft to then lock it all in place. Now that grub screw looked like it was sticking out too far so I just ran the chain around it just to double check and yeah it did look a bit close so I ended up cutting it down with a little Dremel tool but um, I've got some more of the right size ones actually on the way but uh, I wanted to get this done and dusted so I could move on. As you can see that's a lot better now it, and it turns no problem, I can pull on the one side of the chain and it turns and it doesn't rile up on anything. So now on to the exciting part, we're actually drilling the holes for the aluminum bar. Aluminum? Fucking aluminum! What? Aluminium bar, I'm British, I'm not American! <laughs> dun 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 <laughs> Okay, this little contraption is kind of useful and I'm not suggesting go out and buy one of these. You're probably better off just buying a metal cutting blade for your mitre saw. 
but being as I already have this, <laughs> I might as well have a go. It's, it's just a little clamp that fits an angle grinder in, so it allows you to do sort of straight cuts. And I'm planning on cutting it 30 centimeters, and that's 30 centimeters from sort of mainly, mostly the middle of the hole there. And then I think that will give us enough room, if I actually aimed at it, to have the axe bar and then have the what's it called the axe head mounted in here and it'd be pretty good so i'm gonna do that and uh, i'll be back no going back after this Well, that's as far as I can go with angle grinder because this sticks out like a sore thumb. So I'm just going to take it over to the vise and cut the rest off with hacksaw. Also, doing it with angle grinder it doubles as a hand warmer. Don't try this at home. Ha <laughs> ha! Nice, nice bit of mass to that. Plus the hard ox as well. Boof, 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 boof. So here I've just designed a spacer to go on the main sprocket for the axe. Uh, I did, did this just inside Fusion 360. I just created a sketch, did two circles the right diameter, extruded it, and then two more circles for the holes. Um, but yeah, this serves two purposes. One, it stops a massive air gap from between the bolts and the axe bar, because where it's going to sit, you'll see later on in the video but um where it's going to go through there'd be a massive air gap and i'd be worried about it kind of bending and warping the gear so i've added in the spacer to then prevent that it also provides a perfect guide as to where to drill the holes because then i could just snap that into place drill the holes and bob's uncle fanny's your aunt really there's been a few iterations of these but the v3 which you actually see in the video which is just me i've tweaked a few different sizes over sort of the different iteration so it fits nice and snugly but this is just printed with standard draft settings for PLA and then I'll actually print it out of Polycarb the um, Polymaker Polymax PC when I actually come to do the final thing but this is just to get everything lined up and everything nice so let's get that printing Now you can see how snug the fit is here, I actually have to give it a fair amount of force to get it on, but that's exactly the way I wanted it, because I didn't want any play when I'm drilling the actual holes. Now I had a little bit of trouble clamping this, so I actually put a little bit of wood underneath, and then I clamped the vise onto the actual teeth itself. It's not recommended, but I didn't put it on too hard and it allowed me to drill these holes quite nicely. I just lined the drill bit up with each of the holes and then as I ran it through it kind of found its place and then I went straight through through the metal as well and it should in theory be perfectly lined up with the spacer in front of it. Now to keep everything lined up when I actually drill the holes in the aluminium bar itself I'm cutting a bit of the steel rod that is used for the axe pivot and that will go into the actual original hole that I've already drilled and make sure everything's lined up when I drill the two bolt holes. Perhaps I should move some of this stuff. You know, all this, all this flammable stuff, that's probably not good. Ah, that's fucking hot, that is. <laughs> what the cause that will? Ow, this is what's known as impatience, folks. Ow, ow, ah, ah, fucking hot. So now I've just put that pin through the middle of the sprocket and through the hole that I've already drilled in the aluminium bar and then this will allow me to line all the holes up very nicely. So once I got so far I then just finished it off without the sprocket in the way. Because if that is through that is like right on the edge of my... it is. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Marvellous. Now I need to get you in. I need to put my pin back in. And I need a bolt because I don't want that misaligning. Marvellous. Marvellous. Can't move now. How are we positioning us actually? That'd be interesting. How good are we on? Are we in the centre? 
pretty centre. Never been much of a precision engineer, but this is going quite well. Here we go! Right, let's see how we're doing. Right, are we through? We are through. Now, the moment of bloody truth. Will that pin go in there and... Two bolts. Oh, I don't like it! It looks good, if nothing else. So, bar... That was a good plan on my part for once. Because <laughs> this, I could not get up this any more as precise as this. If I only use this bar, because this is like perfect fit. So that's one. Oh please, yeah, boy! Look at that. I don't know if you can see any of that, I'm not showing it. There we go, look at that. Let me take out the voice and I'll show you what I mean. Isn't that just a thing of beauty? Look at that. Bar straight through, doesn't rile upon anything. These fit nicely, like that. So spins, no problem. I'm also in the way of my light, which I just realised. Give these a bit of a sand, uh, sand, file off and then... And then maybe a washer and a lock nut, nylock nut, and we are golden. We are golden. the next thing we need to do is just make our chain so I've just drilled a hole for the motor and put it through where I think it should be and then I'm just eyeing up for size how long the chain needs to be then all you want to do now is get a little Dremel with a grinding wheel and then just grind the little pin that holds the two links together that you want to separate my dad was actually helping out here so thank you very much dad but uh, you just want to grind it down until it's completely flat and then you can use something like a screw, a pointy screw or a tiny screwdriver and just use a little hammer, knock the pin through and the pin should then fall out the bottom and separate the two pieces of chain. One thing to note is the link you want left over is the inside link because then the master link that joins them together goes on the outside. So this is the master link. It consists of a link that goes through with two pins and then a flat plate that goes over the top of that and then a like a, a locking thing that goes over like a circlip type thing that goes over the top. Now you want to grab the two halves of your chain making sure they're both inside links not outside links and then you want to slip them both over each of the posts on your connecting link. Now grab the plate with the two holes on and put that over the top of that. Now you want to grab your circlip and you want to slip it over the two sort of enlarged holes that is attached to sort of a sliding mechanism. And then put that over each of the holes and then grab a pair of pliers and then put one over one of the pins and one over the edge of the clip and just gently squeeze them together and you should hear a little click as it then jumps into place. 
Now this chain on camera looks actually quite big. It is not. It is really, really tiny. And I'm not holding out much hope it's going to last too long. But I've already bought it now, so I might as well use it and we'll see what happens. But well, there we have it, there's pretty much the finished axe mechanism. Uh, the only thing that I'll probably change in the future when it eventually inevitably breaks is the actual chain because it, it doesn't seem beefy enough for the job but it, it seems pretty strong so it should be alright. Also we actually need to bolt the actual axe motor down properly rather than just being screwed in with some wood screws which is what I did just to test it. But yeah anything in the video that I felt like I skipped over a bit I'll put I have a captions on the screen as to what it is and where I got it and then I'll put as many links in the description as I possibly can so you can either replicate this, I would recommend getting a beefier chain but if you want to replicate everything else then there you go. So hopefully in the next few videos we'll be sorting out drive, I haven't decided whether I'm going to try and go for um, brushless or whether I'm going to stick with Argos drills, the only trouble being Argos drills have now been discontinued, it's a different brand or something now so I don't know how that's going to go. But I'll, if I remember, I'll put a picture in here somewhere. But I went and bought like six of them when they were knocked down. So I've got enough to keep me going for a while. But I actually have to buy more speed controllers, whatever I do. So I haven't decided whether I'm actually going to stick with brushed or go with brushless. So let me know in the comments what you think I should do on that one. The other thing we need to do, which I didn't mention in the video also, is there's some bearings I got to actually go in either side where the rod slips through. So when it's actually in the mechanism, it's, it's not scraping or riling on anything. So that needs to be done, although I haven't decided quite how I'm going to do that. I've got some force in a bit, so I'm going to have a go at doing, but I haven't got quite the right size, so I'll probably end up getting one that's exactly the size I need, and then we'll go from there. And then it's just building the sodding thing. As a, I've already got the plastic here ready, so that's hopefully going to all be coming soon. But anyway, thanks everybody for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. It helps me out a lot. And I shall see you next time. Ta-da! Aha! Oh, well, I need, I've got the mic on. I can't run away. God damn it! Uh, hello, Mr. Cuddy. It is Miss Dis Miss 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 Miss. Well, well, I'm. Uh, uh, I've forgotten my words. <laughs>